Captain's Log. It's been just over a year since we defeated the Red Brotherhood and made Terra Nova safe again. As expected, as soon as the news reached the Soul System, many of those who were able to do so packed what little they could and paid for passage to begin a new life on this Earth-like world. Within a few months, the first ships started to appear in orbit, filled with refugees, scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs. With the sudden influx of colonists, many of whom having already gained the necessary skills needed to survive, it wasn't long before Avalon Colony was rebuilt to its former glory, and its streets were once again filled with the sound of people going about their daily lives. Many of those unskilled in construction and engineering soon turned their hands to farming, and with the arrival of surviving seeds and livestock, it didn't take long before Terra Nova had established itself as a strong agricultural colony. Shipping grain, wheat, and maize back to the Soul System in order to feed everyone who'd been left behind and help bring an end to the misery that had plagued mankind since we lost Earth. In the meantime, Professor Hansen and several prominent CDF scientists successfully reverse-engineered the precursor technology and built two atmosphere processing plants at each of the poles on Terra Nova, which should be enough to stabilize the atmosphere and keep it habitable for human life. The next step would be to try to do the same for Mars and possibly the Earth. As for myself, General Maddox has kept me on retainer, and I've spent the last year helping both him and the Marshal mop up what remains of the Red Brotherhood, as well as taking the time out to train new recruits to the CDF. But my ultimate goal is to return to the Soul System and finally clear my name. Unfortunately, it's not all good news. About two weeks after we saved that CDF station from being attacked by the Red Brotherhood, Marshal Gordon received a message which he then promptly forwarded on to me saying, You're not going to like this. And you know what? He was right. Computer, play message, Varus 1. This is a message for my old friends Marshal Gordon and Captain Robertson. As you can quite clearly see, I am very much alive. So sorry to disappoint you both, but as you may have already guessed, I wasn't actually there at the rather spectacular battle you all had. At least, not in person, that is. You see, before the attack, I told each of my men that I would secretly be on one of the other vessels, and not to tell anyone because I knew that the two of you buggers would be trying to bloody well kill me first, and I was right. But the thing is, I had absolutely no intention of being there at all. That's right. Over the last few months, my fellow Red Brethren had become a little mutinous at the fact that their esteemed Captain Varus had, as of late, been unable to deliver on his promise of untold loot and riches, and after I heard that the dread Prince of Destruction, Robertson, so recklessly blew up everything of bloody value, I had no choice but to put Plan B into action. Getting my lieutenants worked up, and then sending those incredulous fools on a suicidal attack against that heavy cruiser and the battle station was absolute genius, I thought. If they all die, then there's no one to usurp me. And if they do somehow manage to succeed, then we'll have removed a troublesome obstacle to our authority, and keep the lovely planet to ourselves. And I, being the hero of the hour, would once again be secure in my position as their illustrious leader. A win-win for Varus, you see. <laughs> Ooh. But I haven't gotten to the best part yet, have I? You see, while you were all trying to kill each other up there, I paid a little visit to that old base. You know, the one next to the big mountain that Robertson tried to flatten. And could you imagine my the sheer feeling of joy and wonder that came over me? 
when just outside the base I discovered the remains of an alien robot just lying there completely unharmed. Uh, well, almost completely. It did have a few bullet holes in it, which I can only assume was the work of the Master of Disaster himself, Captain Sodding Robertson. But there it was, just lying before me, with its six legs and spidery eyes looking as lifeless as a Sunday morning on Titan City. Uh, well, not being one to miss out on an opportunity, I quickly loaded my newfound prize onto my ship and rather hastily left Terra Nova behind. Finding a buyer a few days later wasn't that difficult, and now that I have sold the scary bastard and made a tidy sum doing so, I plan on rebuilding my beautiful Argentivus once again and take to the stars to enjoy life as a gentleman of fortune. Well, I suppose this is farewell. Toodaloo, Marshal, and you too, Captain Robertson, and, you know, don't take it the wrong way when I say this, but I do sincerely hope we never meet again. You really are a pair of interfering old bastards. <laughs> Goodbye. Computer, end message. Yeah, I had a feeling that son of a bitch managed to slip through her fingers, and that message pretty much confirmed it. And you know what? Despite appearing calm on the outside, the Marshal took the news a lot harder than I did. He barely spoke for days afterwards. I mean, sure, I was pissed off. Not just because he called me old. I mean, seriously, I'm not that old. Well, biologically, that is. Physically, I'm way younger than both of them. Chronologically, well, that's another story. To me, Varus has been nothing but a thorn in my side ever since he appeared outside my asteroid base. But for the Marshal... Well, it's more personal. Varus was responsible for killing one of his deputies and a lot of people that he worked with before we met, so I don't think he'll rest until Varus is either brought to justice or killed. And to be quite frank, it'll most likely be the latter. One day, like many other pirates before him that have pushed their luck, Varus will piss off the wrong person or bite off more than he can chew, and his luck will simply run out. Anyway, I've started recording again this morning because this is a very special day. I have been in contact with Mr. Twain and Marshal Gordon over the last few months, specifically with regards to me returning to the Soul System and clearing my name, or at the very least trying to get some of these trumped-up charges against me dropped, and reducing my sentence to a bare minimum. And so far, we've been making some really good progress. Mr. Twain personally believes that with both General Maddox and Marshal Gordon testifying on my behalf, I stand a good chance of being pardoned completely but I'm not entirely convinced it's going to be quite that easy. Regardless, I was informed last night that the representative from the Soul Cooperative and the TCA Marshal that were assigned to escort me back to the Soul System have both arrived in orbit and are waiting for me to rendezvous with them on board my new spacecraft, the Daedalus. That's right, I have a new spacecraft. I relinquished command of the Valiant and handed it over to the CDF shortly after the battle with the Red Brotherhood. And, as a result of this, General Maddox and the other senior chiefs of staff offered to build me a smaller, more civilian-friendly vessel in return. So, I gave them the plans to something that I feel would be apt for bringing me back to the Soul System. And they added it to the shipyard's construction queue. After all, the important military vessels were built first, of course. In fact, it was actually constructed over a month ago, but it's been sitting up in the shipyards near the new space station undergoing a few last-minute checks until I was ready to leave. Which means that this will be my last day on Terra Nova. Well, for the time being at least. I do have another 10 minutes to spare before I'm due to meet another one of the TCA deputies that's supposedly going to be giving me a ride into orbit. So I've got a little time to kill before I go. Anyway, time to get rid of the Valiant there. My new ship looks a little different, but will be very familiar to anyone that's been watching the footage I've recorded since I left Earth all those years ago, but that's a surprise for later on. In the meantime, I better get changed into my spacesuit. There we go. I'll also grab my gear too. I probably won't need all this, but it can't hurt to take it with me, just in case. <sighs> I'm sure going to miss this place. It's going to be months, possibly even years, before I'm back. Just as well the General's giving me an extended leave of absence. <laughs> May as well start switching everything off and lock the doors before I leave.
Well, I suppose I'd better get going. I'm still a bit early, but hopefully that shouldn't be a problem. Apparently I can just leave this rover at the spaceport. General Maddox says he'll get someone to pick it up later on. Speaking of the General, he and his wife Irene, along with Captain Rao and her husband Tom, met up with me for a farewell dinner party last night in the Starlight Lounge. Unfortunately, Marshal Gordon was recalled back to the Soul System some time ago, so obviously he wasn't able to attend, but his replacement Marshal Duval was there to wish me luck, which was a pleasant surprise, as I'd only met him once or twice since he arrived and he never really seemed to speak much, but in all fairness, the TCA do have their hands full at the moment. Yeah, I think I counted six new deputies last time I checked their roster. Or was it seven? Well, it was a lot anyway. Traffic's actually pretty light this morning. The spaceport must be quiet, I guess. That's probably a good thing, as it means it'll be easier to find a parking space. Unfortunately, also absent last night was the young lady I've been seeing recently. Sadly, she didn't take the news that I was returning to the soul system very well. I tried to explain why it was so important to me, but all she knew was that I was leaving and she couldn't understand why. So that was pretty much the end of that. But hey, that's life. And this is just something I need to do. That should do. I'll just power down the rover and set the auto lock. Right, time to check in. Good morning, I'm Captain Robertson. I'm supposed to be meeting with a TCA Deputy Kessler for a flight to the John Bain Orbital Station. Morning, Captain. Please wait. Ah, pad one. Cool, thanks for that. You're welcome. Ha, I just realised I'm going into orbit with somebody called Kessler. I hope that's not a bad omen. Ah, the main landing pad has a general transport vessel on it. And it appears as though they're still unloading the cargo. It looks like I timed it just right. In a few more minutes, this place will be a lot busier. Sorry, just ignore me, I'm recording. <laughs> They're probably wondering who the hell I am. Hey, hang on a second, I recognise that guy. He's that Captain House or Shed or whatever. Apparently he's quite the celebrity these days. Unfortunately, I've never met him in person though. Anyhow, enough of this messing around. I'd better head on over to the landing pad and meet the deputy. That'll be my ride, I reckon. It's a lot bigger than I was expecting. Looks like a Stingray. Mark II, I'm guessing. And this, I'm assuming, is the deputy. Hi, Deputy Kessler, is it? I'm Captain Robertson. I'm here for the ride to Bain Orbital. Hi, good morning. How are you? Good, thanks. Listen, I'm not putting you out of your way, am I? I know you guys are pretty busy right now and I don't want to be a burden or anything. Hey, it's not a problem. I go to inspect the dromedary trade ship that's due in at 1100 hours, and I need to stop here for supplies anyway, hence these oxygen tanks. Ah, that's good to know. If it's okay with you, I'll board now and settle in. Where about do you need me? Well, today's your lucky day, Captain. I'm meeting my partner up in orbit, so it looks like you got the navigator's chair. Excellent. Beats sitting back in a passenger seat somewhere. Sure, climb on board and take a look around. I will finish with these and I'll be with you in just a few more minutes. Copy that. See you on board. Well, that was jolly decent of him. I've not actually been in one of these before. Living quarters. A survival kit. That's useful. A couple of beds. And an even more useful toilet. Yep, pretty much your standard living quarters in a ship this size. And this is the mess hall, which also looks like it serves as a briefing room and a storage area for their equipment. This is actually quite luxurious for a patrol craft this size. Ah, this must be the generator room. Yeah, I remember that these things use battery power, but they've got these hydrogen generators to recharge the batteries in an emergency. 
cool. And last, but by no means least, the cockpit. Good visibility, but you're pretty exposed in this thing. The Mark III apparently has smaller windows and more armour. Anyway, time to get settled in. Nice. The co-pilot or navigator seat has its own instrument display. I wonder if I can fly it from here. Captain Robertson, this is Kessler. I'm about to come on board. Can you do me a favour and turn on the beacon lights and spool up the engines? Copy that, deputy. Switching on the nav lights and powering up the hydrogen thrusters. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Another difference between this and the Mark III is that this variant only has hydrogen thrusters and no jump drive. Not a problem for short-range patrols, but it does mean that you'll want to avoid flying too far from your own forces or base of operation. Ah, here's the deputy. I guess we're about to leave. We are about to lift off, Captain. I hope you are strapped in. Roger that. I'll disable the flight controls on your console, but you should still be able to access the rest of the ship's functions. Copy that. Thanks, Deputy. Avalon Spaceport, this is the TCA patrol vessel Dragonfly 1, requesting immediate liftoff. Over. Clearance granted, Dragonfly 1. You are cleared for takeoff. Avalon Spaceport, out. Oh, nice one. This is fitted with that new 3D external view as well. Well, I shouldn't be so surprised. I think all the new vessels are these days. I have to admit, the novelty never really wears off. More so as I rarely get the chance to use this view planet side. Hey, I can see my house from here. So tell me, Captain, who are you meeting up there? Well, the two people that are escorting me back to the solar system is the Soul Cooperative Legal Advisor, Denise Crawford, and a colleague of yours, a TCA deputy named Steve Bennett. Oh, Bennett! Yep, a friend of yours, I'm guessing. Yeah, we worked together. I knew he was on a special assignment, but the son of a bitch didn't tell me he was babysitting you on your way back to Mars. Yeah, despite the dinner party last night, I think Marshal Duval was trying to keep this as quiet as possible. Yeah, sure. What I am looking forward to is seeing that new space station again once more before I leave. Yeah, a couple of months ago, Duquesne was towed back to Hades orbit, upgraded even more, and made their main outpost in this system. Then a new civilian space station was brought in to replace it above Terra Nova. It's called the John Bain Orbital, named after one of the founders of the Independent Terran Workers Union. And, if all goes well, hopefully we'll be there very shortly. And there it is, just up ahead, John Bain Orbital. Hey Kessler, I'm just getting out my seat to get a better look, okay? Yeah, just be careful when I begin to slow down. Got it, thanks. Yeah, the new station is an impressive feat of engineering. It's got an entire section devoted to trading and commerce, a space hotel, a vessel showroom, and even a bar. Hold on. Why? Oh, okay, that explains it. <laughs> well, I did warn you. Ha, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Hey, Kessler, you know that trade ship you're planning on inspecting? It wasn't called the Mega Fortune by any chance, was it? Because if it was, it looks like they've already arrived before you. You son of a bitch. What the hell does he think he is doing? He knew we were coming. What an idiot. He has just earned himself a 500 credit fine and a two hour deck by deck search. Oh, ouch. <laughs> ah, and there it is, the Daedalus, just inside the space dock there. It's hard to see, but I'll be taking a closer look at it soon enough. I've also spotted one of those new CDF system defense vessels over there. That's on Odysseus, I think. Okay, Captain, this is your stop. Ah, copy that, Deputy. Thanks for the ride, and I hope I see you again soon. Yeah, sure. You take care of yourself out there. Thanks. You too. Dragonfly 1, clear. Robertson, out. Okay, it's time to head on over to the shipyard. <laughs> I'd hate to be the captain of the Meager Fortune right about now. Well, it was his own fault, I suppose. Now, as much as I'd love to visit the station, unfortunately I just don't have the time. Not only do the powers that be need both of these space docks clear for their next builds, but I need to get back to the Soul System as quickly as possible so that I have time to confer with both Mr. Twain and the rest of the legal team. And here it is, the Daedalus. 
The ship is almost an exact copy of the Icarus, except of course that it's been modernised, and I've asked that they add hydrogen thrusters to it, as well as upgrade its defensive capabilities. That's right, it's now got two Gatling turrets, as well as the smaller anti-personnel ones. I hope we never need to use them, but according to Mr. Twain, the Soul system has gotten a little more rowdy since I left, and some of the other corporations have actually begun attacking each other outright, including some recent attacks against the Soul Cooperative themselves. I shouldn't be too worried though, as we'll be escorted back to Mars shortly after we arrive in system anyway. Or at least that's the plan. I'll confirm it all with Ms. Crawford and Marshal, sorry, Deputy Bennett once I'm on board. <laughs> I keep accidentally referring to Steve Bennett as a marshal, but he's only just a deputy. It's a marshal Cole and his two deputies that I'm due to meet once I arrive in the Soul System, though. They, along with some Soul Cooperative guys, will be escorting the Daedalus to Mars orbit. Unlike with the Icarus, I've got the engineers to add lighting all the way down this walkway. They go as far as the access areas to the main thrusters down here, as well as back up to the main airlock near the front of the vessel. Even though it's not a huge change, it does make it a little easier to see whilst working outside. I've kept the airlock and drone bay the same as it was pretty much fine the way it was. Well, I'd better go in and say hi to my new crew. Good morning, Deputy Bennett. I'm Captain Robertson. Hi. Miss Crawford, good to see you again. In person this time. Hello. Listen, I'm just going to do a quick check of the ship's interior before we leave. Hopefully it shouldn't take more than a few minutes. So make yourselves comfortable in the meantime, and what I'll do is I'll give you guys a shout once it's time to move out, okay? Sure. Catch you later. Good. See you soon. Right. Cockpit first? Actually, no, I think I'll start from the back and work my way up this time. Starting with the living area, which has actually seen some of the largest changes. It's like a proper mess hall now with food preparation facilities. The computer mainframe is still here, but the old medical bay's been replaced with a survival kit instead to save space, and also because we're not going to be spending as long away from civilization as the Icarus was. The commander's, or captain's, cryo chamber area now is still essentially the same. But this corridor, however, has been turned into living quarters for the crew, with lockers, cargo containers, the old windows are still here, an armory to store our equipment in, a lavatory, and even a couple of beds at the far end over here. But one of the biggest changes is in this area here, which still has the crew's cryopods and the beacon or decoy launchers, in fact, I'll just switch on the ship's beacon now before we depart and turn on the light so it's easier to see. There, that's a little better. And there it is, the newly installed jump drive, which we can use to reach the solar system within a few months, rather than half a century. I'll just finish checking these. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, time to head on over to the cockpit and get the Daedalus ready to leave the space dock. I also need to run a full ship status check from there, just to make sure that everything's okay one last time before we leave. Glad to see those two are settling in. Hmm, I'll need to close those before we leave. I do like having an artificial gravity generator though, makes it a lot easier to get around. Corridor blast doors, there we go. Excellent. Okay, let's log in and activate the ship's computer. Good morning, Captain. It is good to see you again. Benson! Hey! How are you, old friend? I thought Professor Hansen said he wasn't able to finish upgrading you in time. I am well, Captain. Professor Hansen finished his modifications, and I was installed in the Davos yesterday at 1742 hours local time. Brilliant! Good to have you back, Benson. And since you are here, could you please give me a status report on the Daedalus? Yes, Captain. 
All systems are fully operational, and reactors 1 and 2 are running with unacceptable levels. The batteries and jump drive are fully charged and all the solar panels are operating at nominal levels, but require realignment to increase efficiency. That's perfect. Thanks, Ben. Be advised, there is an error with the sensor in hydrogen tank number 1. While the correct quantity of hydrogen is still being displayed, the no fuel warning keeps being sent to the master caution panel. Copy that, Ben. While that's going to be annoying, it isn't really serious enough to delay our journey back home. Speaking of which... Bane Orbital, this is Captain Robertson, commanding the ISS Daedalus, requesting clearance for space dock departure. Over. Daedalus, this is Bane Orbital Traffic Control. Request granted. Please proceed at minimum speed and engage your jump drive at a safe distance. Have a safe journey, Captain. Roger that, Bane Orbital. Daedalus, out. Looking good? Time to check out the new external view in this thing. Cool. I'll just take things as slowly as possible. I don't want to accidentally cause any damage to either the Daedalus or the space dock, especially at this stage. I have to admit, it is an incredible view. I wonder if that's Captain Rao's ship over there. She was given command of an Odysseus class and she met with us last night, so it is a possibility. Okay, we're fully clear of the space dock now, so it should be safe to rotate the solar panels back into their correct position. There we are. Yep, everything looks good. I really am going to miss this amazing place, but I really do need to get back home and set the record straight. Besides, it shouldn't be too long before I'm back again anyway. A few years at most, I reckon. Right, setting course for the Soul System. Jump drive is fully charged, and all the waypoints are set. I'll just increase my velocity a little to put a bit more distance between us and the orbital station before we jump. Otherwise, I'll get the mass lock warning. It's really just a safety feature that's built into the jump drive computer to try and prevent people from trying to jump too close to a planet's gravity well, another capital vessel, or a space station. Captain to all crew, we're jumping in less than one minute, so make sure you're secure. Robertson out. Well, I guess it's time to say goodbye to Terra Nova, and eventually the whole 82G Radani star system. At least for the time being. It's been quite an adventure, that's for sure. Who would have thought that when we left Earth orbit on board the Icarus that this was what fate had in store for us? While it's sad that we lost some good people along the way, I feel better knowing all the good that's come from everything we've done so far. Thanks to Mr. Twain, Marshal Gordon, General Maddox, Captain Rao and the rest of the CDF, mankind's future among the stars is looking a lot brighter now. Anyway, let's get this show on the road. We're about to jump, Ms. Crawford. Are you secure? Roger. Crawford secure. Copy that, Deputy. Yeah, we're good to go. Excellent. Well, Benson, it looks like our journey into the unknown has finally come to an end, and it's time for us to come home. Activate the jump drive, Ben. Acknowledged, Captain. Jump drive engaged. Jumping in 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.